The perception of the modern footballer is one of success, fame and fortune. But does that equal happiness? Well, one in four people suffer depression in their lives and footballers aren't immune. Vincent Pericard knows that. He played for Juventus, Portsmouth and Stoke, among others. At age 17, he was the subject of a French documentary entitled The Man Who Will Be Worth Billions. At age 29, he'd retired after suffering severe depression for much of his career. Did you feel lonely? Yeah, very lonely. I think um, loneliness is one of the major factors in my career because I left my family, my friends, everything I was used to. Obviously, to go to um, a different country where I couldn't speak the language, I didn't know the culture, I didn't know anyone. Mentally, um, I had to deal with um, things I would have never expected to deal with. And um, this uh, was very challenging and got me down very badly. Pericard sought help for his problems, yet for Germany goalkeeper Robert Enker, the illness had fatal repercussions when he took his own life in 2009. Former Peterborough and Norwich player Leon McKenzie, like Enker, excelled on the pitch. And this is McKenzie! Leon McKenzie for Norwich City! Yet off it, things became very bleak. I was injured, my head was uh, a mess. And I, I took it upon myself to, to the point of I didn't want to be here anymore. I took a, about 40 pills. I'm lucky to be sitting here with you, Tim. I'm lucky. What everyone has to understand is that I wasn't well, so, and I needed help, but I couldn't get it. I wasn't brave enough to say, I need help. But how can players get that help, given the stigma attached to mental health problems? Well, Pericard has founded a non-profit organisation called Elite Welfare Management, and this 18th century manor in Cheshire will act as its retreat, a place for players to come and express themselves in a serene environment. And in a very positive step, Stoke City have become the first Premier League club to actively address such issues as depression in football by allowing Pericard and McKenzie and their team of psychological coaches to speak with and offer support to their players. If I had to speak to someone, I'd rather speak to a former player that has been through, I've been through to just any, any psychology. They might have learned from the book, but there's nothing uh, that the player that has actually done it. I urge players who are suffering, who probably still haven't said anything, um, to come forward and, and just make things better in their life. Because um, the moment you start talking, I find is, a, is a definitely a healing process in your way forward. Millionaire footballers, like anyone else, can be depressed. To accept that fact is one thing, to help prevent it is the next. But for organisations like Elite Welfare Management to succeed requires funding from the football authorities and beyond. If that happens, then football may well be on the way to addressing one of its most taboo subjects. Tim Haig, BBC News in Cheshire.